friends, welcome to Embracing New Life and welcome Dream Church. People from all nations, all tribes, all colors, from all over the world, you are welcome. You are welcome here. And I just want to greet you with the love of God that created you and me and he loves us so unconditionally that he came to earth to die on the cross for you and me. If you don't, if you won't remember anything from this, remember this. God loves you unconditionally. Today I have a very special guest, very special surprise for you. And we can feel the Holy Spirit in the studio right now. We can feel God's love here right now. And that love is transforming into your lives and into your hearts right now and changing you and changing your destiny. Today is a special day for you. If you are watching this broadcast first time, this is not an accident. This is a divine appointment. God has a new destiny for you. And you are going to leave those things behind that were just entangling you and all these chains and lies of the enemy. And today, God is going to give you a fresh start. I have with me Charlene Aaron. She is a mighty, powerful woman of God, a minister, and also a reporter and a news anchor for CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network. She's an amazing friend in my life and I looked up to her. She inspires me. She challenges me with her messages and she has a huge heart for prayer. We're going to pray for you today. But first, I want to welcome you. <laughs> welcome to my show. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. It's a blessing to be here today <laughs> with you. Thank you so much for being I'm here. I'm so excited about being here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, mean, I feel I'm the Holy so Spirit over here. Right I just now. feel the Holy yes. Spirit here with us. Yes. And I pray that the joy that we have right yes. now will just go and Flow yes. over the hearts of people. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. During this testimony, I'm going to hear so much yes. about your life. God has been telling me today I am going to set people free Thank from you, depression. Father God. There are people watching this broadcast that they are yes. suicidal, mm -hmm. and God is going to give them a new beginning. Yes. There are people with panic attacks yes. and anxiety attacks. There are people with all kinds of emotional traumas. Mm. They are going to be set free today. Amen. In there the name of Jesus. There are girls that anorexia, they have anorexia, bulimia because of rejection or yes. molestation or abuse. Yes. They are all set free today. Absolutely. In the because, name of Jesus. Amen. Because we, the sun we sets all, free. Amen. We've overcome the devil. By the blood of the Lamb. And? And the word of, of our, our testimony. testimony. And everything that you mentioned. Yes. Everything that you just spoke out of your mouth. Yes. I can relate to that. Amen. Depression, yes. suicidal, anxiety, insomnia, all ah. of it. Now I look at a woman who yes. is so whole, so healthy, not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. A powerhouse. Yes. And to when God people, to God be the glory, but people look at you and say, oh, she must have had the perfect life. She had a maybe silver spoon in her mouth, right? Yeah. Tell us about uh, oh, wow. what was that? That was not me. <laughs> <laughs> I was not born yes. with the silver spoon in my mouth, Ishik, let me mm -hmm. tell you. My family was as dysfunctional as they come. Wow. Alcoholic father, poverty, lack, wow. low self-esteem. Um, a lot of horrible things happened in my family when I was growing up. My sister died when I was 10. Wow. It tore my family apart. You would think that the death of a child wow. in a family would bring the husband and wife together. Mm. No, that's not what happened. Wow. Dad became just even more enraged and angry. Mom became, became uh, an alcoholic. Um, pretty Your much dad too. was already an alcoholic. Oh. Uh, mom became became an alcoholic because she was trying to deal with the pain of losing her daughter. Yes. And she didn't know how to cope. Wow. And so it just tore the family apart. And I became this person in the family. You know, my sister was gone, dad left, mom was spending nights out drinking and wouldn't come home all weekend. Mm -hmm. And I had a little brother and my sister's two small children. And so I became like a caretaker. You, for, you had to grow up Yeah, I had fast. to grow up at 10 years old. Wow and be like the mother and father to my sibling, my brother, and my little nephew and my little niece. Wow. And it wasn't easy. And I want to say something because 
you had to grow up so f fast yes. that you didn't have a childhood, right? I didn't have a childhood. But I, when I see you in the hair department or here and there, <laughs> when we get to, together, there's this child comes to surface, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And I want to speak to someone right now. I didn't have a childhood. I was abused. I was molested mm. at five. And then my parents knew about it. They didn't know it, do anything about yeah. it. My father was an abuser. My mother was an abuser. But let me tell you, God gave me my childhood after 40. Mm. He can give you your childhood back yes. right now because we serve a God of restoration. And you know, I think about the scripture even as you're talking that, you know, the Bible says that God is able to restore the years yes. that Hallelujah. have been robbed from you. Amen. And that's what God does. He's yes. in the business of restoration. Mm. Those years when I just, you know, I was so lost, I was so broken, had to grow up really fast. Yes. God has when I tell you he is a redeemer and a restorer, yes. he redeemed me and he restored my life. Wow. I'm living a life now at 52 years old that I never imagined. I don't believe that. I Look at this. I'm putting my age out there. <laughs> I, I didn't, never thought I I'd put my age. I you were 52. <laughs> but God restored <laughs> wow. years. The times when I, I used to tell. sit on the side of my bed when I was thinking about suicide. Wow. I wanted to take my life. I didn't even know how to pray. I didn't know what to pray. Oh. And I just remembered in my mind the name Jesus. You know, there's power in his name. Hallelujah. There is power. Mm. There's no other power mm. Come on. except in the name of Jesus. Yes. His name is above every name. Yes. Whatever name is out there, his name is greater wow. and more powerful mm. than any name that's ever been named or will ever be named. Amen. Amen. There's healing and deliverance and salvation in just that one name, wow. the name Jesus. Another day I heard a preacher said, you need to call on his name. Yes. That is very important. His name. Because when I call you, Charlene, you pay attention Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. And if we want to get God's attention, attention. we're going to say the Jesus, name Jesus. And he's like, what is it? Absolutely. You know, we need to get his attention. And you know who else knows his name? Yes. The devil. That's right. The enemy. That's right. Hates the name Jesus. There's power in there's his There's power name. in his name. You know, when I look at the world right now, there's a generations mm. that are hurting because of rejection. We need <sighs> godly fathers. Yes. You know, a lot of young people are angry Absolutely. because they don't have a good father. Absolutely. And how, how does it affect a little oh, child wow. that your father left you? Oh my gosh. Please tell Let us. me tell you, when I was growing up, Ishik, I used to sit on my father's lap. We had this huge house oh. and I used to sit on his lap on the front porch. It was just something we did in the South. Aww. And I used to sing with my father sitting on the front porch, sitting on my dad's lap. And so he used to tell me things like, you're special, Aww. you're beautiful. And so when my sister died, as I said, and my father just, he was gone. Fell apart. Fell apart. I couldn't believe it. I said, but he told me I was special. He told me that he loved me, but yet he, he left without saying goodbye. Wow. So does that mean I'm not special? So it threw me into this whole mindset of rejection and mm -hmm. you're not valuable and, and you're not special, you're not good enough. Yes. And so all those years, I just kept trying to find the love of a father, the love of my father. What happened to my father? Why doesn't he love me? Why did he leave without saying goodbye? And you felt responsible. I felt like it was something that I did. And I began to say, it's because I was bad. Yes, something was wrong with you. So Something's wrong with that. me yes. to make him leave. Wow. I wasn't lovable enough because he just left. And I went through years of rejection. Wow. Going from relationship to relationship to relationship with men, mm -hmm. trying to find the acceptance sure. that I was good enough, that I was pretty enough, smart enough, good enough, valuable enough to have love. And did it happen to you? Rejected people usually reject others before oh they gosh. get rejected. Oh, yes. You break up first oh, let me tell you. because you, you think that they're going to break up with <laughs> oh, you, right? that was me. Yeah, me too. I, I would personally and intentionally yes. sabotage relationships mm -hmm. because I said they can't mean that they really love me. They can't mean yeah. that He's going to leave me anyway. With, he's going to leave me in just a little yes. while. It's only going to be a matter of time. Yes. And that's the enemy. Wow. It's In, a cycle. Yeah, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. As we are speaking to someone right now, yes. you can break this cycle. Yes. And I want to tell you this. I had a, a 
I mean, professional, Frank Meadows was with me and he said, something happens in your childhood, an event, mm -hmm. but the interpretation of that event mm -hmm. completely messes you up. Mm -hmm. Not only the event, you are hurt, your father left, or maybe you, you were molested, maybe you were raped, okay? All these things that they happened to you when you were a child, but the interpretation in you, they're yeah. taking the responsibility, oh, I am filthy, I am dirty, I am shameful, I am not good enough. You know, it was my fault that uh, rape happened to me. It was my fault that molestation or my father left because I was not good enough. Yes. I am stupid. All this interpretation comes from the devil. Yes. It's, you are fed with that lie. Okay, event was bad. Yes but it was not your fault. Right. Today, God wants to set you free yes. from that responsibility. Maybe you had a bad breakup with your boyfriend and you are thinking, I'm not beautiful enough. I am not smart enough. This is why he left me. There's a lie from the devil. Mm -hmm. it, there's nothing wrong with you, but you live in a cursed world and people live in a sinful nature and we are under the power of the dominion of the prince of the air time to time because of our sinful nature. And all these three things come against you. And what are you going to do today? So I want to ask you. I love what you're saying you because know, the Bible says the truth will set you free. Will set you free. Amen. Amen. The you lies shall find that the, the enemies, the enemy told me all those years, hmm. you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. Hmm. You're not attractive enough. You're not rich enough. You're not whatever. Yes. All lies. Yes, that's right. And the lies of the enemy have to be replaced hmm. with the truth Amen. of who God says you are. This is so true. You know what? I was, can you imagine coming from Islam? Oh. I was so much, so much fed with lies. Yes. I, I was less than a cow, yes. inferior to man. Yes. And I said to myself, like a few years ago, I was brainwashed. Mm -hmm. I was brainwashed. And I, God said, why don't you brainwash yourself with my word? <laughs> and I literally, That's right. I mean, seriously and purposefully, intentionally started brainwashing myself Amen. with truth. That's what the word says. We have to be transformed. Form. Amen. By the renewing of our mind. Amen. We have to replace those old thoughts, with the, those lies, yes. with the truth of God's word. And that's what really started me on the journey to healing. Wow. Getting along with God mm -hmm. and getting to know what he says, looking in the mirror mm -hmm. of his word and say, oh, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm oh, healed. Yes. I'm accepted. Oh, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Who gives me the strength? Faith comes through Faith hearing, comes hearing through the hearing. word of God, Absolutely. but you got to hear from your own mouth. You have to hear it mouth. from your own mouth. Amen. Convince yourself. Amen. I had to convince myself exactly. that I am valuable. <laughs> I am more than a conqueror. That's awesome. That's wonderful. There's nobody but God. But when you have a, a, an experience like this, yeah. with the, what, what happened with your dad? Yes. What was your concept about God? Because it yeah. messes us up with God oh, too, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. This is what God taught me. Mm -hmm. I, I kept God at bay for a long time because oh. I was like, okay, my father left me. And I didn't know when I was going mm -hmm. through this that, that God was going to use all of this sure. in my life. Yes. But I just had this concept that God was this taskmaster mm -hmm. that you're going to mess up, Charlene. You're going you're, you're, you're to mess up. You're going to screw it up. So yes. you might as well just, just walk away. Yeah. God's going to walk away. Because you're going to screw up and it's going to make me leave just like your dad did. Wow. And I lived with that. Wow. You know how long I lived? Throughout my teen years, through college years, young adult. Wow. Thinking that God was this person, this, this being in the sky that's going to hit me over the head whenever I messed up. You are describing Muslim God. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's what yes, I thought. Exactly. Even, and I went to church. I went to church, but I never had that personal Relationship, relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. And that's what it takes. It takes a personal mm -hmm. relationship with Jesus. If you want to find out who you really are, mm -hmm. who God made you to be, Amen. you've got to have a personal relationship with God Amen. through Jesus Christ. I didn't know who I was. I was so messed up. My thinking was screwed up. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my identity. I didn't know my purpose. Yes. And God has a purpose. Amen. He has a purpose for us. And we find that purpose. Miles Monroe used to, used to always say, in order to find the purpose of the thing, you've got to go to the creator who made the thing. Wow. So beautiful. So beautiful. 
This, this cup has a purpose. It, cu it has a purpose. Yes. Absolutely. And God made each of us with a unique purpose. purpose. He's the potter, we are the clay. We are the clay, just like that cup. That's right. Yes. And some areas are already made Absolutely. because of the world, yes. because of the devil and everything. Yes. Yes. Sometimes he has to break it. Yeah. And put it back, right? And, and this says it in, in, in on the scripture about God being that potter, but that potter sees that clay and it's even marred in the potter's mm -hmm. hand. Yes. He said, okay, there's some defects I see in this mm. and I've got to make this over again. Yes. Because I'm, what I'm making is a masterpiece. Mm. I'm, a, Absolutely. I'm making you over to be a masterpiece, a trophy of my grace. That's right. A beautiful piece of pottery for the glory of God. Charlene, a lot of young girls, they don't know this. And when they are rejected by their parents, yeah. especially father, yeah. later on, it's too easy. They throw themselves oh in front gosh. of someone that, who treats them or Absolutely. abuses them and everything. Would you please speak to them yes. that they won't settle for less? Yes. When I was growing up and my father left, I remember the loneliness mm. I felt in my heart, mm. that ache, that void, you know, that void that you try to fill with sex, with men, drugs, mm. alcohol, whatever. And, and at the end of the day, that ache is still there. Mm. I can relate to that. I was searching for a love that only God could give me. Mm. And that's you today. And I feel your heart. I feel you looking for that love that only God can give you. Yes. It's not found in the face of a man. It's not found in the nightclub. It's not found in the parties. Yes. Or the how many likes uh. or friends you have on Facebook or Instagram. Mm. The love that you're looking for is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's where your heart belongs. Yes. Your heart belongs with Jesus. Your heart is looking for home. Mm. And God is your home. Jesus, yes. he's who you're looking for. That void, that emptiness that you have, yes. it's not going to be filled with anything else. Yes. God created that place in you that you're trying to fill. It's a God-shaped hole that only he can fill. And all you have to do is say, that's what I want. That's what I've been looking for. And that's what happened to me when I was searching when I was introduced to Jesus Christ, I remember saying, this is what I've been looking for my entire life. Mm. When you come to the end of your searching, when you come to the end of yourself, it's Jesus that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Man is not going to be able to fill that void. Amen. Man will never be able to satisfy that thirsting, that hunger that you have. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You can totally relate because you're sitting there and you're saying, I've tried everything. I've tried this guy. I've tried that guy. I've gone in and out of relationships. I remember going in and out of relationships. And at the end of every relationship that ended badly, they all ended badly. I would sit on the side of my bed and I would weep. And I said, Lord, here I am again. And he says, I've been waiting for you, Charlene. I've been waiting for you after all the dust settles, after all of the brokenness. And I said, Lord, how can you put the pieces of my life back together again? Because it was so broken. Mm. I was so broken. I was hurting. And you're hurting today. And the Holy Spirit is drawing you. You've not turned to this by accident. God loves you, and he's saying, I want to put your life back together again. But this time it's going to be my way and not your way. All you have to do is open your heart. Amen. That's the first step. Open your heart. Don't be so hard. Don't think mm. you have to have it all together. That's why we need God, because we don't have it together. Mm. He is that potter. Yes. He's that potter. That's so beautiful. You know, I feel like right now some of you are going to start talking to God. Yes. Just talk to him right now. Yes. Talk to Jesus right now. Jesus, I don't know how I can come out of this mess. Yes. I don't know how I can put it, but, yes. but you know, because you made me. Yes. 
So just surrender. Yes. Everything. Release everything in your heart, in yes. your past to God. I feel like emotional healing is taking place Thank right you, now. Lord. Inner healing is taking Just receive it. You don't have to figure this out. Don't analyze everything. God's power is supernatural power. You cannot explain that. And He's doing a miracle in your heart yes. right now. And all you need to do is to receive it, yes. to say, Lord, I receive it. Yes. I receive what you have for me. I receive your healing yes. right now, yes. Jesus. Yes. Come and live inside of me. And this is not a religious prayer. Just talk to Him. Talk to Him like, say, call Him Daddy. Maybe you never call Him mm -hmm. Daddy until now. And this is your time, first yes. time to call Him Daddy. I love Ta that. I love that. I love, I love it, right? that image of Daddy. Yes, right. Because that was so crucial mm -hmm. to my healing, Ishik. Wow. When I began to learn that God was my Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. The way that I used to sit on my front porch yes. on my dad's lap, God took that analogy <laughs> and he said, I want you to climb up on my lap yes. and put your head on my shoulder mm. and just be comforted. Yes. And that's what I began to do. I would say, Daddy, I just, I'm hurting. Mm. Yes. And like you said, just talk to God. Mm. I began to talk to him and say, Daddy, can I just sit on your lap right now? Oh. Can you just hold me? in your arms. Can you just give me the comfort and the peace that I need? And that's what he began to do. And he began to heal my emotions. Yes. Because my emotions were all over the place. All over the place. Basket case. I oh, was I a was, basket case. It's a miracle I wasn't in a mental yes. institution. <laughs> yes. Seriously. Yes. But now people see our joy and they say, what are they on? <laughs> Thank what you, are Lord. they thinking, right? Jesus can do it. I want you to address a lot of single people. Oh, wow. And, and let me tell you, one of the biggest, this is an epidemic, people get sick, mm -hmm. people get uh, depressed, is loneliness. Yep. A lot, a lot of people are feeling lonely. Absolutely. They are looking for that better health. Yes. You know, please speak to them yes. right now. Yes. Loneliness is real. I can totally relate to it. And you know, the Bible even says that it's not good for man to be alone. But you know, you can be alone and not be lonely. And that's because of Jesus. You're searching for a person, just like I was, so many of us, millions all over the world are searching for love. That's why these eHarmony websites and Match.com, so many of these dating sites are so popular because there is, there's an epidemic of people looking, searching, hungry, longing for love, for relationship. And I want to encourage you today. What you're really searching for, what your heart is really crying out for is God. What your heart is really longing for is to be filled with a love that's never going to leave you, that's never going to abandon you. I was looking for that love. I was trying to find that love, trying to find that, that void, something to fill that void, that loneliness, you know, that ache. I know that ache. It's very familiar. And you're sitting where you're sitting right now. I see a man sitting and you have your hands on your head like this and you're saying, I can't believe the relationship is over. God sees you right where you are and he wants you to cry out to him right now. He's there. He is there with you in that dark place. And he says, you know what? Suicide is not the answer. Mm -hmm. Taking your life is not the answer. He's speaking to your heart right now. Yes, you, you. You're saying, God, is she talking to me? Yes, God is talking to you through me right now. And he says, if you would just say, Lord, I give up. I've tried relationships and none of them worked out. I know what it's like. I know what it's like for that relationship to not work out. I've had so many broken relationships. I mean, the person that I wanted to be the one, I prayed to be the one, turned out not to be the one. Why? Because God has a better plan for you. Mm. He has something for you that's going to far outweigh what you think you want. See, we think we know what we want. We think we know what we don't know what we really need. God knows what we really need. God knows what you need right now. And if you will just let him 
change your life, if you would let him fill that place inside of you, that, that man that I was just talking about, it's like the little boy in you was never loved. Your mom died and you weren't nurtured. God wants to nurture you. He wants to nurture you. He wants to make you whole. He wants to heal you. Young ladies, you don't have to flaunt yourself in front of men. You don't have to try to put yourself on men to make them love you. God has a, a better plan. He has a, a way that's higher. He has a way that's higher for you and it's going to fulfill you. It's not going to be a temporary love. You don't have to look for love in so many faces of men. All you have to seek is one face, the face of God. And that's where you're going to find the fulfillment that you're looking for. Amen. Thank you so much for being with oh, me today. Thank what you a for blessing. Me. Thank what a you, blessing. God. So I feel like a lot of chains and thank yokes you, of bondages yes. are being broken thank right you, now. Jesus. And God is telling me to tell you his ways are higher than your ways. His toes are higher than your toes. And he has better dreams for you than you have for yourself, those dreams and desires. And he's there to fulfill his dreams for you. You're, you don't have to fulfill them. He is going to fulfill them in your life. Jesus. I pray right now that you will be filled with hope. You will be filled with joy right now. Be filled with joy because you are loved. Start calling God your daddy. Start calling him Abba Father. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can pray this prayer, Jesus. Come and live inside of me. I believe that you are, you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and you rose from the dead on the third day. Please come and live inside of me and forgive my sins. Be the center of my life right now. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer, you are born again and you have a new heart and a new life and start being filled with his joy. I love you. God bless you. Until next time, be free and be with Jesus and be with his joy. God bless you.